capacity of within account. But you will not get there just doing the basics. You will not. Now, on that follow-up is where you have handling objections. We have a basic system for all the seven skills. Uh, that's follow-up, objections. Five is close down, closing. Um, six is onboarding a new person. That's a duplication, skill of duplication, right? Seven is promoting event. Now, those are the basic skills. Aside from these basic skills, there are some sort I call soft skills you must as well master. You can call these ones the technical skills of your craft. Okay? The technical skills of your craft. For example, I learned aluminum fabrication. The technical skill is how do I knock the thing? How do I make the window? Right? But is that all I need to become successful in, a, in, a, in that business? Of course not. You need some soft skills to complement this. Soft skills like communication, right? How do you communicate to people in a very powerful way that draws them into you? How do you have a pleasing personality that can gather people together to support your vision? Communication, leadership, okay? These are soft skills that must complement your other skills. Um, skills like time and task management, right? You must be able to manage your own time, your beliefs, mindset development, all those things part into that soft skill segment. But these are the basic skills you need to master. Now, if you look at it very critically, we have systems around these things. If you can see here, please confirm you can hear me. Confirm that you are following and you can you understand what I'm, what I'm communicating here. Because we should come to a point where we, we stop deceiving ourselves thinking that if you just keep doing what you are doing, going the way you are going right now, you'll get to that income level. It is not automatic, okay? It is not automatic. You have to be very intentional about your success in the business. If you want to earn the kind of income you are tapping in the chat board, have you mastered the skill of finding prospect? Have you mastered the skill of inviting prospect? Are you making effort to learn how to present the business with a slide? There is a reason why we made the slide available to everybody. It is so that a day will come that you now have a partner that wants to do a big announcement or a home launch, and there will be nobody in that location. You can go there yourself and present for that person. It's part of being a leader, right? Imagine if or in all of this meeting, all of us here, Nobody here can present. I cannot present. I, we have to wait all the time for somebody else outside to present for us. How awkward would that be? Okay? So you have to make a conscious decision to master all the skills of the business, not just one of them. Now, in the success manual, I believe we all have access to the success manual. In the success manual, when it comes to follow-up, we give you a framework. We give you a, a, a script. Is that true? You ask them a question, did you attend the event in the end? Yes, I did. Fantastic. Um, what do you like best from everything you saw? I like this, I like that. On a scale of one to ten, one being you're not interested, ten being you want to start right now. What a level? Trying to know the temperature, they tell you, oh, I'm a, I'm a five, I'm a six, I'm a this and that. Oh, that means you have interest, but in other words, you are calling forth their objection, right? And when they give you the objection, the script says that. Place them on a three-way call with your offline. Is that true? If you can relate to all this I'm saying, just, just confirm in the chat box. Okay, that's what you have in your, your success manual. Call your offline and put the person on a three-way call so that that offline can handle their objections for you. Is that true? The reason why we have that system is so that while you're on that call, you can learn from the offline leader as he handles that objection so that one day, you can do it yourself as well. The goal is independence. The goal is freedom. Okay? But you will not have true freedom if your result is still tied to somebody's participation. Okay? If your result is still tied to something external from you. Now, how do you handle objection? One of the biggest reasons why you are having slow growth in your business 
is because either you don't know how to handle objection or your team members, you have not taught them effectively how to handle objection. Many of us are fantastic at inviting. You invite a lot of people, they show up. But when you are losing them, it's not going to follow up. And you start having fears, all kinds of fears, because you don't know what to do. If you're like that here, confirm in the chat box. Okay? You have lost businesses because you could not follow up properly and handle the objection. There will be times that your offline will not even be available to pick your three week call. Sometimes. That's why you need to pay attention for the next few minutes. Now, the first thing you must understand is this we are not in the business of selling. Our business is not a business of selling or trying to try so hard to force it down their throats. No, it is sorting business. S O R T. We are simply sorting who are the people that are already looking for what we have. Our trainer today is somebody who has um, built a very massive business. Our trainer today has over 20 something years experience in network marketing. And he said something today. He said he went to all different leaders from different companies, asking them a question that when you saw this opportunity, what was your objection? Was it time? Was it money? Was it limiting in yourself? What was it? And guess what? He said all 10 of them did not have any objection. Which means what? Those people were already looking for the opportunity. They were prepared and it just clicked for them. And guess what? The same is true for me. So understand that instead of trying to try so hard to hard sell people on your business, trying so hard, calling the same person for days, for months, right? You are better off moving on to sort and get somebody else who is looking for this. It just clicks for them. The day Mr. Michael signed up, it was not even the prospect, right? He just came, but he saw it. The day I was presented the business, it was on a pen and paper. I saw it just like that. Okay? Now, does that mean that some persons will not have questions and objections? Of course they will. But now, you must understand that you are not trying to sell them. You are simply being what? A consultant. Our business is a business of training and consultancy. It's a business of training and consultancy, not selling or convincing. Okay? Our business is a business of training and consultancy, not convincing or selling. Now, who is a consultant? He is simply somebody who is acting in the best interest of his client. Is that true? You are simply acting in the best interest of your client. Trying to get to know what the, their challenges might be, asking questions, listening to them, trying to understand their point of view, and trying to see. Now you know better. A consultant must know better than the prospect, right? They are thinking, oh, I don't have time because in their mind they are thinking maybe this will take ten years. I mean, it will take all my day and all of that, right? But you know better. That you can do this, you can start the business part time. Yes, you cannot earn full time income doing it part time, but you can start part time. And when your part time income is beginning to match up with your full time income, then you can consider going full time. But he does not know that. Okay, look at Dr. Mbak today. Dr. Mbak today is a eight figure monthly earner in this business. When he saw the opportunity, he was working as a doctor in four different hospitals. Right? But today is an eight figure earner. Can they be so busy than him? Right? So, but you need to understand that that is your job. Don't try so hard to convince the prospect. Your job is to help them. And I love the two questions he gave us. Those, those, those questions. When they give you that objection, simply ask them. Is it that you really don't have the money? Is it that you really don't have the time? 
is this really the objection or it's just a polite way of saying you are not interested or of saying no because either way is probably cool with me okay you understand that um not one prospect like your dreams does not depend on one person okay to get achieved and because of that you're not trying so hard to get this one person into the business somebody following me okay so you want to confirm that do you see the opportunity i love the way Abadana always says this write this down you cannot see opportunity and objection at the same time you are either seeing the opportunity or you are seeing a limitation that's the word not objection limitation you cannot see opportunity or limitation at the same time okay when somebody sees the business they will see it that's why when we are doing big events, the reason why we book a lot of people is because we know that some persons, their eyes have been trained to recognize opportunities. Some people are not yet ready for opportunity because they can't even see it. They've not improved themselves. When I saw the business, I saw leverage. I understood leverage because I, I was working. I understood the fact that, okay, and now I can use some leverage. I, I saw the opportunity. Just like that why i have improved myself but there are people that they've not yet trained their eyes to recognize opportunities people are trained to look for job not to see opportunity so understand that when you are showing them the business they may be at the point in their life where they've not gone to that point yet but you are looking for the people that are already developed people that already are trained to see leverage okay so when they give you an objection, don't see it as um, they are trying to reject me. An objection is not a rejection, okay? Write this down. An objection is not a rejection. It is simply an invitation from your prospect to give them more education about the business. An objection from your prospect is not a rejection. An objection is not a rejection, it is simply an invitation from your prospects to educate them further on the business. That should be your mindset. Okay? That should be your mindset. So your job as a consultant is to now help them to understand it better. Okay? That's why you doing the business, you must know what you are doing. You must understand you cannot handle objection with Kwashoko knowledge of the business at least know the stories of your leaders know my story learn my story okay listen to my presentation learn my story attend five peer meetings listen to other people's stories during thursday 6 p.m opera is presenting right she will share a story winnie will share a story oh he will share a story you hear stories in in, in, in super monday cell meetings all these stories should help you know their names know their stories so that when a prospect is bringing you an objection you have somebody that had a similar objection but today they are successful if i'm getting value i'm getting value okay because when you are still trying to develop yourself you must leverage on other people's story to build your business okay so it's not about you Okay, it's about understanding that this can as well change their life. But if you are in the business and you don't even pay attention to learning, how can you help your prospect? How can you be an effective consultant? Right? How can you get be an effective? So that's why you need to make a personal decision if you really believe in your vision of the business. Okay. Oh, I want to make ten million a month. I want to make 50 million a month. You cannot do it without mastering those skills. And I understand it's a gradual process, but you must be making the effort. Okay? You must be making the effort. I'm not saying you'll get there in one day. Guys, I was not always like this. I was very, I saw at this opportunity, at, at all the skills, finding prospect, inviting prospect, I saw at all the skills, even presenting. Right? I have messed up many, 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 many times. Messed up. Okay? 
But you know what? I'm, I'm getting better because I keep doing it. Because I keep doing it. Handling objection or prospect is not automatic for me. Right? First, I was doing three way call with my leader, ambassador. Later on, from all the ways he was handling the objection, I began to learn. Then I practice on my prospect, and they will, I'll mess up, they will go away, <laughs> right? So it is not all prospect that you are supposed to sign up. Some of them are meant for you to practice on them. So stop being afraid of, oh, I don't want to lose my, this my prospect. I don't want to lose, mm, 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 don't be afraid. Just do it, okay? The person who makes the most mistake will win eventually. Write it down. That's the truth. The person who makes the most mistake, the most blunder, the most last presentation, the key word there is most, will win eventually. But if they are afraid of trying for, for fear of failure, guess what? They're not going to go anywhere because you won't learn. Okay? You won't learn. But your job is to fail quickly. Okay, fail quickly so you can learn the proper way of doing it. When you do it, it didn't work. Go back and check. What did I say wrong? One of our problem is that we think that the prospect is the problem. Oh, people are not responding to my opportunity well. Oh, they are promising me they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not, they are not showing forth. Oh, this or that. It is not about the prospect. You come back and examine the whole process. What could I improve? How could I do better next time? Right? But you must do it to get that knowledge. It's called activity knowledge. That's why I would say when you do the 20, 20 talent, what you are doing basically is to do a lot of activities, make plenty of mistakes so you can get good over time. Okay? So objections are your friend, not your enemy. They are simply an invitation from your prospect for you to educate them. Now, if they give you one that you cannot handle just yet, link up with the three-way call with somebody in the business who knows better than you, and then listen and learn, okay? Listen and learn, all right? In fact, in some cases, it just gave you a, gave us a, a framework here. Feel, pet, found. I understand how you feel. I felt the same way too. This is what I found out, and then tell a story. It does not have to be your own story. Okay, it doesn't have to be your own story. So that's why you need to be an active participant in the, in the business. Do not be a passive member. Be engaged. Attend the presentations. Engage in the cell meetings. Right. So you can understand and you can hear other people's stories, and you can you can use them in your follow up. Somebody gives an objection that you cannot even handle, and don't have anybody at all to to present something to help you do a three week Tell the person, you know what? Um, I don't know about that, but here is what I know. There is somebody like this, like that had a similar objection, that had a similar challenge, and today is doing this and this and this and that. In the prospect mind, is thinking, okay, right? If that person can do it, then maybe I can too. Because, like an recorder told us one day, he said, all objections, all objections in the marketing. Come down to two. Come down to just two. Okay? All the kind of objections you, you ever see. Come down to two. One, limiting belief in themselves. Two, limiting belief in the opportunity or in network marketing. That's it. So you must have stories around these objections to help them get better understanding. And I think that's what I'm going to talk for today. Okay?